with his incredible talents and insatiable skills, it didn't take long for George St. Pierre to become one of the best and most popular fighters in the history of mixed martial arts. In fact, this career of his led to him taking on the villainous role of Batroque the Leaper in the MCU, making it no doubt that the man has a boatload of cash in his bank account. But what does someone like George St. Pierre spend his hard-earned money on, and how much is he estimated to be worth nowadays anyway? Well, whether you're a fan of the world-class fighter or just want to know more about one of the most iconic men in the industry, you've come to the right place, as we're about to explore both the net worth and lifestyle of George St. Pierre. So strap yourselves in and get ready to review a life well spent, as things are about to get interesting. But before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any of the new videos we post. A little more about George. With an unusual name like George St. Pierre, you won't be surprised to hear that he was born in the small town of St. Isidore in Quebec, Canada, where the majority of the town speaks French as their primary language. Having been born on May 19, 1981, George is currently 39 years old, and this is often referred to as rush by those in the fighting industry. His parents roll and Pauline St. Pierre did their best to give him a good childhood, but things went a bit downhill when he started to attend school. There, he would be plagued by bullies who stole everything from his clothes to his money. This is what led to him to play sports like hockey that helped build his muscle mass. He also began to learn Kyokushin Karate at the age of seven. After surpassing his father in the art and showing a vast amount of potential, George was taken on by a master who carried on his training. The master of his did, however, end up passing away when George was only 16 years old, which resulted in him expanding his knowledge by taking on the art of wrestling, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and boxing. While attending high school at Ecole Pierre Bernard, George set the record for the most number of chin-ups ever done, which showed how his training was starting to affect his body. After graduating from high school, he moved on to study kinesiology and began to work as a bouncer at the Montreal nightclub called the Fuzzy Brassard, as well as a garbage man so that he could afford his school fees. Since George George was already a second Dan Kyokushin karate black belt at the age of 12, it shouldn't surprise you to hear that his first professional fight took place when he was only 20, in which he faced off against Caro Parisian of UFC 46. Although not the most explosive of debuts, George won the match by unanimous decision. It was his second matchup against fighter Jay Hiran at UFC 48, however, which showed what he could really do. Only one minute and 42 seconds into the first round, George had Heron on the ground, defeating him by technical knockout. In only his third fight in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, George found himself competing against Matt Hughes for the vacant welterweight championship. But after admittedly being in awe of the iconic Hughes, George ended up tapping out with only 10 seconds to go in the first round. This was the first loss of his career and propelled him to even greater heights. After this defeat, George took a stab at TKO 19 by going against Dave Strasser, whom he got the better of in the form of Kimurusha Mission within the first round. He then returned to the UFC to defeat Jason Miller by unanimous decision. A historical moment then took place when George became the second fighter to defeat Sean Shrek and first ever to actually finish him off. This win resulted in George dropping to his knees and pleading the UFC management to give him another shot at the championship title. And the UFC obliged, stating that he would be a contender once he recovered from his injuries. While recovering, he worked as a trainer on the Ultimate Fighter number 4, The Comeback. It was then at UFC 65 that George had another shot at taking on Matt Hughes for the UFC welterweight championship. Almost getting the best of Hughes with a massive Superman punch toward the end of the first round, the second round saw Hughes go down and match being called in George's favor by technical knockout. And just like that, George St. Pierre had become the UFC welterweight champion, resulting in him signing a new six-fight deal with the Ultimate Fighting Championship. This title was, however, lost by him at UFC 69, where he was defeated by Matt Serra due to what he described as a lack of focus. This was, however, his last loss in the entirety of his MMA career. He reclaimed the welterweight championship once more by taking out Matt Serra in the UFC's first ever Canadian event in Montreal, Quebec, which must have felt incredible for the winning George. It was from this moment forward that George was referred by many in the industry to be the best in the world, with a total of 26 wins and two losses. George's net worth. Considering that George is a two-division champion,
champion in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, having won titles in both the welterweight and middleweight divisions, there's no doubt that he was able to make a lot of money from both his fights and associated brand deals. That being said, George also has a pretty lucrative acting career, especially when it comes to movies that require a role with a vast amount of fighting experience. Probably one of the most agile characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Batroc the Leaper, was played by him in Captain America the Winter Soldier. Taking all of this into account, experts estimate that George has a net worth of around 30 million US dollars at the moment, which means he has enough money to buy just about anything he wants. But what are the things that George chooses to spend his money on in the first place? His collection of cars. It is clear from doing our research that George was never the type of fighter who fought in the octagon for either fame or fortune. In fact, the lack of luxury items he surrounds himself with is almost humbling and shows that he simply wanted to work hard and be the best that he could be. It was this focus, after all, which led him to be considered as the best fighter in all of mixed martial arts history. That being said, everyone needs to get from A to B, and when you're as popular as someone like George St. Pierre, taking public transportation can end up being far more effort than not. Imagine being flooded by fans and paparazzi when all you want is to get a Big Mac from McDonald's. This is why it only made sense for George to invest in some wheels of his own. And while we might not know what his car collection is currently composed of, we know that he owned a matte black Range Rover SUV at one point. He was also reported to own a Lamborghini at one point, but there was quite a bit of confusion as to whether this was a car he had rented for a special occasion or actually bought for himself. Either way, this is still considered to be a relatively small collection for those with a net worth of around $30 million, showing that George isn't really too concerned with the luxury side of life, his wristwatch collection. When you're as popular as George and have to attend a large variety of events that call for you to look your best, it's always suggested that you wear a nice timepiece to help turn heads in your general direction. This is why the only luxurious items fans ever saw George wearing was his collection of expensive wristwatches, which seems to change each and every time George made an appearance. And while we know you must be thinking that such a collection of watches would have cost him quite a bit, the true state of affairs is that the Ultimate Fighter was actually gifted the vast majority of his collection throughout his career. In other words, we can't really say that George spent his hard-earned cash on this collection, the gifts given to his loved ones. Although George has yet to tie the knot, he does have a son who is about five years old at the moment. Not much is really known about the relationship between him and his baby mama, but we are aware that George has tried his best to be the greatest father he can be. In fact, he considers family to be incredibly important, which makes sense considering the upbringing he had which we discussed a bit earlier. As such, much of what the iconic fighter has earned ends up being used to treat his parents, sister, Miriam, and son to things they could never afford when they were growing up. Because his parents sacrificed so much for him when he was younger, he has taken them to faraway places on vacation that they have always wanted to visit. This includes a trip to Africa where the group participated in a safari drive, which can be incredibly expensive if one looks at flights, accommodations, and other costs involved. He has also been known to take his family to really fancy restaurants, when talking about his favorite thing to do, he once said, One of my favorite things to do is to take my dad to a very high-end restaurant, which is very expensive, you know. I take him there, and when I eat, I see his eyes go big. Suffice it to say, George loves to spend his money on the ones he loves, his charitable contributions. We also saw earlier that George started to learn karate and other forms of mixed martial arts growing up because he was being bullied at school. This went from being a necessity to protect himself to being his greatest passion. And although the bullying worked out for him in the long run, the same can't be said about the majority of kids who go through the same things that he did. Bullying has become far worse now with the advent of social media and the internet in general after all which is why George has also spent a significant amount of his wealth on charitable contributions to help stop bullying in its tracks. His own charity, the George St. Pierre Foundation, promotes both physical activity and anti-bullying for at-risk youths across Canada and the United States, and has probably changed quite a few lives since it was set up a couple years ago. What do you think about the low-key lifestyle of George St. Pierre? Feel free to let us know in the comment section down below.